Welcome back to Better Than Before. Tony Richards here, you there. We want to talk at this part of the show about your leadership or business lesson of the week. And I'm reading a book right now called The Power of Moments. It's by Chip and Dan Heath. And it was recommended to me by one of my CEO clients, Mark Finner of MFA Oil, and his whole executive team is finishing up the book right now. And we're going to be talking about what we gleaned from the book, how we can apply it in the business, how we can apply it with the various staffs of each of the executives coming up at our next management retreat. And I thought I'd share it with you because it's a pretty powerful book. Here's what I'm learning from this informative piece of work. When we rate experiences, when we have experiences, we tend to base them on two extreme baselines, the best or worst moment on one end and the end of the moment on the other end. Psychologists call this the peak end rule. And in identifying a defining moment, the authors of the book focus on four elements. First element is elevation, an interruption of everyday activities, often accompanied by a boost in sensory pleasures and an added element of surprise. So you experience an elevation moment when something unexpected happens that comes out of nowhere. Maybe your loved one surprises you with some flowers or shows up at work and going to take you out to dinner or something, but that's an elevation moment. The second kind of defining moment is insight. It's where your brain gets rewired and the understanding of ourselves and the world become, you get insights and things become a little clearer. That's what the exponential leadership retreat's all about is gaining insight on yourself and be able to rewire your brain a little and have a deeper understanding of yourself and also of the world that you work in. The third kind of moment is a pride moment. And that's a moment where you've got some kind of achievement or some kind of encouragement comes along and it boosts your self-esteem or your ego. And then the fourth kind of moment is a connection moment where I noticed over Memorial Weekend, HBO was rerunning that show Band of Brothers. It's a great show about how this whole company of men bonded during World War II. And so you have a connection moment when you have a shared experience with some other people and it forms a really special memory and you probably want to repeat it over and over. These four different defining moments classifications can have both positive and negative moments when you experience them. They also talk about three overarching moments that you're going to have or theme moments. And so the first kind is a transition moment. And a transition moment is exactly what you would think a transition would be going from one thing or to another thing or going from one place to another place. That could be anything from a a shift in your career. So you move from one job to another job. You move from one company to another company. You move on from relationship with one person and you start a new relationship with another person. Or a transition moment also might be where you lost a loved one and now life is going to be different. You're in transition from life with that person to life with Without that person. The second kind of overarching moment that we experience is a milestone moment where you have milestones in your life that really change or alter the course of your life, like when you graduated high school or when you graduated college or when you went from renting an apartment to actually purchasing a home or something like that where the whole course of your life has changed, but you look at it in a way where it's like, okay, that was a real strong milestone in my life that I will remember that is kind of taken me from this level to another level. And then there are pit moments, P-I-T, pit moments. And those are low level type things. Maybe you got fired or you lost a job or you maybe lost some money in the stock market. You made a poor decision that cost you in some way. Maybe you got a divorce or something that sent you into a lower level of your life. And the whole point about defining and being able to recognize these moments is that there's always something you can do. 
So you have the opportunity to either take the victim mentality where these moments happen to you and you're powerless to do anything, or you take the empowerment mindset where there's always some action that you can take to either change your viewpoint, change your feelings, or change what's going on around you, or at least change your thinking or your experience about it. And so there's a bunch of strategies for all of these moments in the book. And I think this really comes in handy when we have moments that are out of our control, like a transition moment or a pit moment. And then we have a plan for how to deal with those in a healthy way. And I think that's a big part of it too. When these moments occur in our life, do we deal with them in a healthy way or do we deal with them in an unhealthy way? So a healthy way would be like, if you're going through a divorce, a healthy way would be to look at it as you know, I now have opportunity to meet more people or to bring more people into the void that's been created in my life. An unhealthy way would be, well, I'm going to be drinking a whole lot more because that's my way of coping with this situation. So having a healthy plan to how to deal with these moments and then knowing that you have the power and ability to create those milestone moments, not only for yourself, but where this is really handy for business owners and executives that have staff is you don't have to wait for something good to happen. You can make something good happen. You can create milestone moments and you can create pride moments with your team with a little intention and a little planning. You can create that. I know here at Clear Vision, we try to do that once a quarter where our whole staff does something together that kind of creates that shared connection, those pride moments about things that we've accomplished and we have a little fun together. We did a murder mystery role play game not long ago that everybody participated in and turned out to be a lot of fun. My favorite strategy out of the book as I was reading it was interrupt the routine. That was a strategy. And the basic premise to that is that anything that is done too much or through a really strong, uninterrupted routine can lose its effectiveness over time. We as human beings all get into ruts, and it's where we tend to just continue to do it over and over and we don't even realize that we're doing it and routine can set you free and really empower you or it can really get you into a stagnant place where every now and then you just need to bust up the routine you know the old adage absence makes the heart grow fonder when something goes away for a little while I always used to say there would be a great country song written how can I miss you if you won't go away and so sometimes when things go out of our life, it's good for us to miss it for a while, and it seems fresh, new, and exciting when it comes back in. You know, there's a phrase called old hat. Things get to be old hat. But if that old hat was put away in storage and you hadn't seen it in 10 years, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's my hat, I think can be pretty effective. Breaking up the routine, doing something random can be effective. In the book, they call it strategic surprise. So I kind of like that. That can be used some pretty effective and memorable moments. Great book. It's called The Power of Moments. It's by Chip and Dan Heath. And I would highly recommend that. It's not your typical leadership type book. It's basically got some different kinds of applications for things that happen in our lives every single day. And I think it'd be really effective for you. That's today's show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time for another episode of Better Than Before. This is Tony Richards saying goodbye so long. And remember, everything gets better when you get better.